This is yeah. a different number to the one I called you on. Yeah, the the one um, I'm I'm the secretary of the local congregation, the Waterside Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses, and the Waterside number is. that you used is the like the public contact number. Okay. But I'm I'm just uh, phoning you on you know on my own number. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. So it was uh, it was interesting the question you raised. Yes. And I I I was one I was quite intrigued because I did wonder if you you know if you've had any previous contact with the witnesses at all. Um, yes, I've spoken to them on the streets on quite a few occasions. Um, I have spoken in the lockdown uh, to a. I have been phoned by Jehovah's Witnesses during the lockdown also yeah right yeah and um, you know that um, answer that I gave you did, did that sorry in you, any way you, you, you the, need to the, the answer that I gave you did it satisfy you I don't know what way? that answer is I, I, I do not I refuse to dialogue via, via text or, or, or email what is your answer I, 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 I'll, I'll listen now Oh right, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't realise that you, um, you, you, you know, don't uh, like to use texting. But um, um, I don't know if you did read any of the scriptures I mentioned in the text I sent you. Just start over. What is what is the point you wish to make? I'm, 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 I, 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 I will only talk to people in dialogue. Anything that's monologue sure. where I'm being preached to is just deleted, unread. OK, because I, I okay. get essays sent to me by Christadelphians and Mormons and I get th hundreds and hundreds of links. I'm supposed to do with this book and that book and this link and that link. It's all deleted unread. All right. So yeah. I, I'm willing to talk only when the situation is a dialogue, either face to face where you can say what you like and I can respond and, and vice versa or on the phone. Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's really nice that we can talk here this evening then that's really good um yeah the uh, i mean if um i did notice that you did say in your uh, message that you had been reading in the uh, enjoy life forever book that uh, chapter 33 so obviously you didn't object to looking at that as a you know as a point of interest so, do you, you want know, me to read that particular three lines? Do you want me to read those three lines? Um, yeah, I can do. I've got the book here in front of me, and because um, then we have it, the context, it, we we know what I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was to do with the um, time that we call the millennium, the one thousand year rule of Jesus Christ. And uh, the uh, you know gradual um, restoration of humanity to perfection, based on the um, you know what we call the ransom sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And uh, let's see if I've got it here. It was uh, point three, wasn't it? What the <clears throat> Yeah, it was it was under what will God's kingdom accomplish after the wicked are destroyed. So that's after what the you know, Revelation sixteen calls the Battle of Armageddon. And it says after the wicked are destroyed, Jesus will rule as king for one thousand years. During that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. So that was the, the bit that you were yes. interested in, wasn't it? Yes. I, I don't... Well, f the first thing is I've heard that these 144,000 co-rulers who are called the anointed or the little flock, 
they are going to be resurrected not as human beings but as non-human spirit creatures have i have i got that right that is correct yeah if you read Rev um, sorry first corinthians 15 that makes that very clear um it doesn't and say they, one they Corinthians. share with jesus in the nature of his resurrection first peter three eighteen. he was resurrected as a spirit no he's resurrected by the spirit well, I, I think to have a look at uh, 1 Peter 3.18. Um, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So it was the Holy Spirit who brought him back to life. It's not saying that Jesus was resurrected as a spirit, uh, n n not, not as I would understand it, sir, because post-resurrection, Jesus is called the man Christ Jesus. In 1 Timothy 2.5, there's other verses as well. Um, I'll read from verse 4, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, this is all in the present tense, the verbs are present tense. Who desires all men to be saved, present tense, and to come to a knowledge of the truth, again present tense. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, that's anthropos in Greek, Christ Jesus. So Paul writing to Timothy 30 years after the resurrection, writing in the present tense, he calls Christ the man, present tense, Christ Jesus. Yeah, that is correct. He obviously had to be uh, completely human to provide the sacrifice required to die as a human, but to be raised uh, back to uh, life in the heavens with his father to uh, sit at his father's right hand until he received the uh, kingship to rule as the king of God's kingdom and bring about these blessings to uh, others on the earth who some would be resurrected and others who would survive the, the end of this corrupt system to enjoy what God originally intended the earth to be like. So, you know, that uh, obviously he would return to the state he had before he was sent to the earth. And, uh, his, you know, his life force was transferred to the, the womb of Mary so that he could be born as a perfect human. But, 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 you're, the, you're, you're, but you're talking about things in the past. You, you keep yeah. using a past tense. 1 Timothy 2.5 is written in the present tense. Paul's writing in about AD 55 to AD 60, 30 years after the resurrection, and he's writing about Christ as the man Christ Jesus in the present tense, not past tense. He's not saying Jesus was the man. He's saying Jesus is, present tense, the man Christ Jesus. And man is, man is anthropos in Greek. Yeah, what was the verse you were just reading from in Timothy? 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Yeah, that, that's referring to Christ's role as the mediator, isn't it, between man and God. And uh, it it then in verse 6 it says who gave himself a corresponding mm -hmm. ransom mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. all yeah. so yeah. in it's... First Corinthians 15 it refers to him as the last Adam so he corresponded as a perfect human exactly to the state that Adam was in before he sinned yes, so it, it... His, his ransom corresponded to what was lost and uh, provided the uh, well you need to prove all this for, for our forgiveness yes. of sins you would need to prove all this from from the bible to me um, but 1 timothy 2 5 is a present tense the past tense comes in in verse 6 where he talks about his death on the tree as a ransom yes but verse 5 is present tense and it calls Christ the man Christ Jesus in the present tense. Um, this really isn't the, 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 the main reason why I brought out page 137. Um, 
let me read it to you again. After the wicked are destroyed, Jesus will rule as king for a thousand years. During that time, he and his 140,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Well, I do not believe that anybody, any human being or any angel, can help human beings uh, resurrected during the millennium to become perfect and sinless. I think only Jesus Christ makes human beings perfect and sinless. The, the, the yeah, idea well, that you go to another human being to have your sins forgiven, that's as old as the hills. That's the basis of Roman Catholicism. The Pope says he's appointed by Jesus. He's the successor of Peter. He wears a ring symbolizing his authority as Peter's successor. He gives his authority to the bishop. And the bishops then appoint priests. And the priests have seven sacraments, such as the Mass, the Confessional, Baptism, which take your sins away. So in the Roman Catholic system, and in Mormonism, and in uh, certain other religious groups, you go to a priest to become perfect and sinless, because the Catholic priest or the Mormon priest can take your sins away, according to these religious systems. Well, here's a Jehovah's Witness book, and on page 137, it's saying roughly the same thing. During that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth, that's during the millennium, to become perfect and sinless. You're saying that these 144,000 non-human spirit creatures are going to help humans to become perfect and sinless. I find that, you know, uh, with respect, a little difficult. Well, that, that is not what that's saying at all. We, we can help people to come to Christ and to come to God to receive forgiveness for their sins by preaching the good news to them, the good news of the kingdom, and by entreating them to, uh, as in, it says in Corinthians, to uh, entreat other people to become reconciled to God. So with, if you think of um, Matthew 28, the, the last commands that Jesus gave to his faithful disciples, he said, go therefore and make disciples of, pe of people of all the nations, teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you. So by helping people to bring their lives into harmony with uh, Christ's um, commands and the standards that he set, his example, his teaching, etc., that, that helps them to get on that road to life and to become approved by God uh, at the end of the 1,000 year reign when they are faced with that final test and can gain that everlasting life that was lost by the uh, rebellion and disobedience in the Garden of Eden. So that, that is helping somebody to become perfect and sinless is not imparting that or giving or, or, or um, presumptuously claiming that a, an imperfect human can bestow that on somebody like, as you said in the, in, in the uh, hold, 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 hold on the 144,000 co-rulers the anointed are not human at this point they're non-human spirit creatures you, you admitted to that earlier that's right, but yeah. they, they were imperfect humans before they... Yeah, but this is talking about during the millennium. But this is talking about, listen, after the wicked are destroyed, Jesus will rule as king for a thousand years. So this is during the millennium. During that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers, it doesn't mention the great crowd, okay? Because if it was just giving them books, like what can the Bible teach us and giving them Bibles then it would say the 144,000 and the great crowd will help people on earth to become perfect and sinless by giving them Bible studies and giving them books and Bibles. No, it doesn't. It says, he, during that time, during the millennium, he and his 144,000 co-rulers, that's the anointed, will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. So the anointed are doing something that the great crowd can't do. They're actually helping people to become perfect and sinless. They're assisting Jesus in his work of perfecting the saints and taking people's sins away. And I would object to that, sir. Well, it, it, we need 
we need to understand the channel of communication that that um, the authority, ultimate authority as the sovereign of the universe rests with the father of Jesus Christ, Jehovah God. He entrusts, <coughs> excuse me, authority to his son as the king of the kingdom. And in Revelation 5 verse 10, it talks about the these ones who will sit on thrones as co-rulers, uh, ruling as kings and as priests. And uh, in the book of Hebrews is all about the role of Jesus Christ as the great high priest. And of course, that was foreshadowed by the priestly arrangement under the Mosaic law, where Aaron was the first high priest, and the Aaronic family provided the high priest but then the Levites provided the under-priests who assisted the, the high priest and taught the people and helped them to, uh, to be successful in presenting their sacrifices at the tabernacle or the temple. So Jesus Christ has under-priests. Uh, uh, this is irrelevant. This is, th this is irrelevant. I agree. Jesus Christ is the great high priest. He has under-priests. Priests of praise. Okay? Not priests who can take the sins of human beings away. Um, let me just read First Peter 2.9. What, what you've read from the book, though, it doesn't say they can take uh, sin away. It says yeah. they help... It, they help, they help humans. humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Exactly, which is very, very different to actually uh, in any way being able to forgive sins and take sin away. Only, only Christ can do that by means of the sacrifice of his perfect human body. Well then, well, well, then, well then, how do these co-rulers help people to become perfect and sinless? By the the channel of communication, if you what is this channel of communication? Read, if you if you read about the role of the angels, they are God's ministers working, and the scriptures talk about them, you know, being sent on assignments and and ministering to people on the earth. I mean, even Jesus Christ, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, an angel. So, sorry, we're, we, we're going way off topic. Let's just get to the point. How do these 144,000 rulers help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless, as your book states? Well, if you think of any government, if you have the head of the government and, and others assisting him, co-rulers, they have an administration and a channel of communication so obviously that is coming down from heaven, communicating down through human agents of the kingdom on the earth to give instructions. I mean, in Revelation 20, it talks about scrolls being opened with uh, instructions for that during that millennium. And then people, if you think of millions of resurrected ones, Many who've never even heard of the Bible or heard of God or Christ. Sorry, how taught. how do the hundred and forty four thousand co rulers? Let me read it. During that time, this is the millennium. He and his hundred and forty four thousand co rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. It doesn't mention the great crowd, so this is not sharing Bibles or literature with people. This is something specifically that the hundred and forty four thousand co rulers do as kings and priests. Yes. Because you believe that the great crowd are not kings and priests, only the 144,000 co-rulers are kings and priests. And from 1 Peter 2, 9, I believe that they are a priesthood. Uh, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. So the royal priesthood, whoever they are, their, their priesthood is of praise not of forgiving people of their sins but but your this quote says during that time he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless 
So how do the 144,000 co-rulers, the anointed, the little flock, help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless? Well, by conveying to human society at that time instructions from uh, Jehovah and Jesus Christ to guide the people in what they need to do to become perfect and sinless and, and to uh, show their obedience and submission to God's universal sovereignty so that they will withstand the final test when Satan is, is briefly let out of the abyss uh, at the end of the millennium. And so that, that uh, just like the angels, they're given assignments, they would come down to convey information to uh, servants of God on the earth, they would convey messages which were written down by some as became part of the Bible and the 144,000 will be used uh, as administrators to convey to human society what they need to know to become approved by God uh, during that millennium. So we don't go to the Bible, we go to these 144,000 co-rulers because they're going to speak on God's behalf. No, the, the, we'll, we'll still have the Bible, but yeah, no, I, I, if, you well... read in, if you read in Revelation 20, oh. the, the, it says there will be scrolls opened yeah. at that time. Yeah, those, so be... th those scrolls are believers' works. I think. I mean, the, the and, and I and I Bible saw the dead, small and great. This is Revelation twenty, verse twelve. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. Now, there's not literally books. Okay, when it mentions the book of life and and books in Revelation. It, it, it's talking about God's foreknowledge. So these books represent believers' works. And another book was open, which is the book of life. Okay, God's foreknowledge. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. So it's just a figurative way of describing their works. But we've, we've missed the point. What you're saying, really, is that during the millennium, people are going to be guided not by the Bible, not by Christ, but by these 144,000 co-rulers. You know, I, 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 I hope he doesn't die um, um, soon. I, I, you know, but I hope that doesn't happen. But if members of your governing body were to die, and I hope that doesn't happen, I hope Mr. Lett and Mr. Hurd live a long life. But let's say that Mr. Lett and Mr. Hurd were sadly to die tomorrow. Um, they would be resurrected as one of these 144,000 non-human spirit creatures. And then they would have messages from Jehovah God to people on earth during the millennium, which would help them to become perfect and sinless. That's why the great crowd isn't mentioned, because you don't believe the great crowd gets messages from Jehovah. But you do believe that, you know, um, dead Jehovah's Witnesses like Judge Rutherford and Fred France. And uh, I think Theodore Jerez was another member of the governing body. I, I read something about him the other day. Um, they're going to be resurrected as non-human spirit creatures and God's going to guide people on earth not by the Bible and not by Christ directly I mean can you, can you just imagine this I mean I'm not a pre-millennialist so I, I don't believe there's going to be a tho throne in Jerusalem in a rebuilt temple and for a thousand years Jesus will be sitting on this throne for a thousand years and you're saying that people aren't going to listen to Jesus they, they're, they're going to be spending more time listening to the 144,000 co-rulers than they will Jesus. It, it, it doesn't make any sense? Well, it doesn't, because that's not exactly not what we're saying and not what the publication is saying. We Everything in our publication is backed up with the scriptures and what Jesus taught and what his faithful disciples taught. I mean, even in, in the first century there was a channel of communication when uh, issues arose like the circumcision issue it was referred to the governing body of the apostles and older men in Jerusalem there's no governing they, there's they, no governing they prayed about body. it 
there's there's and no use of the fra- there's no use of the phrase governing body governing body deals with a corporation under american law certain types of corporation not for profit corporations are ruled by a governing body you don't find the word governing body in the bible look mark chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 says that jesus alone forgives sins uh, jesus had healed somebody uh, a paralytic man so mark chapter 2 verse 9 which is easier to say to the paralytic your sins are forgiven you or to say arise take up your bed and walk but that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins he said to the paralytic i say to you arise take up your bed and go your way into your house mark chapter 2 verse 9 to 11 so jesus has the ability to forgive sins jesus has the ability to make people become perfect and sinless i agree with that I don't agree with the claim that Jesus' 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth during the millennium to become perfect and sinless. I, I have trouble with that, sir. Oh, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that, that people are helped to come to the source of forgiveness by by the teaching of the good news and oh no but, you... but, but no 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 because then why doesn't it say during that time he jesus and his 144,000 co-rulers and the great crowd on earth will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless by giving them bible studies and distributing bible literature and bibles it doesn't say that it deliberately admits the great crowd because it's saying that as priests, kings and priests, these 144,000 co-rulers somehow have work. They work together with Jesus in making people become perfect and sinless. And my Bible says Jesus alone forgives sins, not Jesus and anyone else, not Jesus and angels, not Jesus and men. Salvation is from, you know, Jesus making a covenant with God the Father and that covenant is then uh, applied to human beings by the Holy Spirit. But I don't believe that other human beings have any part in that covenant. I don't believe the Pope has a part in some covenant. I don't believe the Pope can make people perfect and sinless. I don't believe the Mormon prophet in Utah and the Mormon temples can make people perfect and sinless. I don't believe the Seventh-day Adventists can make people perfect and sinless. But here, because you admit the great you omit you don't mention the great crowd this is not teaching bible literature this is not giving people bible studies and, and giving them bibles this is saying that the 144,000 in some way work with jesus um to to remit sin and, and, and i i can't accept that no we don't accept that that's not exactly not what we are saying or, right. it's not what we believe if you have if you have a look at Second Corinthians five and the verses that I quoted in my text D- don't, no don't don't ever you. refer to anything you've emailed me just just give it to me fresh what where do you want well, me to go I am I'm, I'm just yep. giving it to you very yep. fresh right now yeah because Second anything that you've five. texted me I'm not going to be I do not read anything that's sent to me and I get text after text after text of lists of Bible verses and and links I'm supposed to go to I don't look at any of it okay no, well, don't, don't don't look at it I don't no. have a look in your own Bible now yep at 2nd Corinthians 5 yep and verse 18 don't worry about the text just ignore that but it, it's talking uh, Paul was writing to his fellow anointed Christians in Corinth and in verse 18 of 2nd Corinthians 5 he says but all things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of the reconciliation <laughs> of preaching namely <laughs> that God was by means of Christ reconciling a world to himself mm-hmm not counting their offences against them, and he entrusted to us the message of the reconciliation. Therefore we are ambassadors substituting for Christ as though God were making an appeal through us as substitutes for Christ. We beg, become reconciled to God. So Jesus has... uh, given authority to Christians 
to draw others to God and Christ by means of this ministry. By means of preaching. And that's where the teaching comes in. But it's, it's surely preaching. The ministry of reconciliation is simply preaching the gospel. It's not. Exactly. It's not, it's as the true. Catholics and the Mormons claim, that Catholic and Mormon priests work with Jesus and f can forgive sins because Jesus has given them sacraments by which the Mormon and the Catholic priest can forgive sins on Jesus' behalf. Let, let, let me read from verse... Um, you're, conf you're confusing Jehovah's Witnesses with these other religions who, uh, you know, we know that what they do and what they say is not uh, correct according to the scriptures, but in that, in that command in Matthew 28, after Jesus' death and resurrection... He said in Matthew 28, verse 19... Yes, I memorise it. Go, yeah. go, therefore, and make disciples of people of all the nations, baptising them, etc., and in verse 20, teaching them to observe yes, all teaching. the things I've commanded you. Teaching. So Te it's, not, it's not only preaching, it's teaching Ex people Exactly. To preaching and teaching. I to harmony with God's... Uh, standards and requirements. I agree. It's teaching. It's teaching or preaching the gospel. I agree with that. But we well, don't the read between preaching but, and teaching. Uh, well, both. Whatever. They're, they're, the, they're the same thing. But it doesn't say in Matthew twenty-eight twenty, uh, "Go ye into all the world, right? Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then forgive their sins." on Jesus' behalf, or work with well, Jesus to forgive people's sins. Only Christ well, forgives sins. Well, we can't do that. No, no human can forgive anybody's sin. It's, it's, uh, God, Jesus Christ has been entrusted by his Father with that authority to do that. So no, no, uh, no um, even an angel or a resurrected human resurrected to life in heaven none of them can do that that is only based on the the ransom sacrifice of Jesus Christ which makes that Therefore, possible so we're not, nobody is trying to say that they can uh, abrogate that r responsibility to themselves Therefore, we can't, the scriptures are very clear on that Therefore, nobody can help another human being become perfect and sinless. We can. As I said, we can help them by encouraging them to learn about God. Yeah, agreed, 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 teaching and preaching. But in your book on page 137, during that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Why does it admit the great crowd? If people become perfect and sinless through the preaching of the Bible and uh, the distribution of Bible literature, why are the great crowd omitted? Well, it, 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 it's just using a, a broad general term. It, you, the exact words are humans on earth. Now, when we you know, go into that in more detail, there will be those who survive Armageddon who will make up, uh, will be a great crowd of tribulation survivors uh, in Revelation 7, but there will also be a vast crowd, Acts 24, 15, who will be resurrected, uh, who've been in, in the common grave of mankind and who will be brought back to life, many who, who've never had the opportunity to learn about God. Why Christ does it admit the, the great crowd? Why does it say during that time he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless? It's well, almost as if the, the priestly function of the co-rulers... part of that general uh, description. It's, it's, uh, it's but, not, but this is, um, this is wrong in, because in you've detail. just said you've just said this has nothing to do with making people sinless even though that's what the text says. You said this is just teaching Bible principles, giving Bible literature out, giving out Bibles. Well, why doesn't the text say during that time, he, Jesus, and his 144,000 co-rulers and the great crowd will help humans on earth, the resurrected ones, to become perfect and sinless by offering them Bible studies and giving them Bible literature and Bibles? 
it, it doesn't say that. It's almost as if the text is saying that the 144,000, their priestly function will be to help humans become perfect and sinless, humans who are resurrected during the millennium. During that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Look, could I spend some time looking at this? Maybe it's best if we choose a completely different topic next week and just look at one single chapter. Yeah, you're very welcome to, uh, to um, explore uh, with us anything that you, any questions you have or uh, things you'd like to raise. We're always glad to discuss these things. Um, what about chapter 7 on the Holy Spirit? Um, chapter 7, section 4, calls the Holy Spirit God's active force. Could we look at that? Sure. Um... Now, um, would eight eight thirty be okay, or is that too late? No, eight thirty is fine with me. Right. I forgot the name. I'm sorry. It's it's Phil Philip. Phil. I will read that chapter. So I'm I'm very familiar with the with the material. Okay, so I'll read the whole chapter before next 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 Wednesday, and maybe if we just stick to one thing, if we just stick to the Holy Spirit, because I see the Holy Spirit as a person. You see. Fair enough. My background was in the evangelical church, so when I I, I read that, that's one thing that um, uh, that stood out for me so okay um 8 30 next week phil thank you yeah look forward to that robert thanks for your time okay all the best bye yeah take care bye now bye